Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming to talk about classic Burn Crusade and specifically about the top 5 easiest heroic dungeons in the game. Something that you might be interested in before starting the Burn Crusade. Before I get into the list, a few things that are worth mentioning. That regardless of dungeon, Burn Crusade heroics are still Burn Crusade heroics. As in 5-man dungeons in the expansion, well known and notorious for its exceptional difficulty in terms of PvE content. And I personally take the view that only the initial difficulty of five mans in raids in Cataclysm compares to the overall PvE difficulty that we had to deal with in Outland, with the exception of, of course, mythic dungeons and raiding. As such, I'd strongly recommend that regardless of dungeon, you have the following in your party to make it that much easier of an experience. It's not strictly necessary, but it will make for a far less frustrating experience. A decently geared tank with defense cap and about 10,000 HP and armor, especially for warriors who have the easiest gearing options for pre-raid as tanks. For Taurians, it's probably more like 12,000, 11,000 really uh, that they should get before attempting to do heroic dungeons. That's not hard, by the way. For druids and paladins, that's a different discussion, but for warriors getting these kind of allies, it's not really difficult at all. A shaman who helps out quite a bit with not just bloodless for the DPS benefit, but also totems, in particular tremor and grounding totem, which are quite useful in many instances with annoying trash and bosses. A mage for the sake of polymorph, free water, and improved blizzard if you're intending to AoE or kite mobs, and perhaps a warlock for fear, healthstone, soulstone, and potentially curse of weakness, in particular if you're using a paladin tank. You shouldn't feel pigeonholed into any particular setup, but the golden trio of Shaman, Mage, and Warlock can and will make things easier for most, though not all, dungeons in the Burn Crusade. Regarding the dungeons themselves, there are two main things that make a dungeon hard. High damage and annoying abilities. The damage can eventually be dealt with using gear, in particular on the tank, how much dependent on the tuning, while annoying abilities will remain a constant, making certain dungeons, like Architraz in this example, frustrating to deal with throughout the entirety of the Burn Crusade. The dungeons on this list are much more approachable, even with weaker gear, pre-raid gear, either because the damage isn't quite as extreme from the mobs, or the abilities not quite as annoying. Starting with number 5, we have Underbog Heroic. It might seem a bit of a surprising choice, especially for those that did this instance on retail. But Underbog really isn't too hard of a dungeon. It certainly can be long, and it can be frustrating, and the bosses in trash might do quite a bit of damage, but it can also be, if you do it right, in many ways a fast and easy dungeon. That's because there are three main areas. The first one where you're dealing with spore bats and elementals until the first boss, which can take quite a while, especially as the mobs can do quite a bit of damage to your tank, but there is a certain skip available here that allows you to get past a lot of these mobs. And the first boss himself is easier to do than the two giants that are before him that you'll have to deal with. Then there's a Godranai area where the trash is something of a joke in terms of their HP and damage, but it is annoying due to the constant mana drains. But it's not hard to take down, and the only difficulty you might encounter here is actually the second boss, which can be a nuisance with its high damage, but it's fairly manageable for the most part. Then the final area where outside of a couple of annoying mobs like uh, the Fen Rays that will do constant fears, you don't really have much of a challenge, you have a good skip available, and the only real difficulty here might be the third boss with his traps and high damage on aim shot, but not too much of a challenge overall, and the final boss is something of a joke compared to everything that you've dealt to actually get to it. Like, if you can get to the Black Stalker on Heroic, especially if you can kill the third boss, it, it really isn't that hard of a dungeon. So, that earns Underbog the number 5 spot on this list. And number 4, we have the Black Morass, where your task is to defend Medivh as he is trying to open the Dark Portal. While the other Caverns of Time dungeon, Durnholt, may be one of the most difficult heroics in the game, Black Morass is certainly one of the easier ones, with the notable caveat being that the high damage that you can take from the mobs and the boss bosses presenting a certain difficulty. So it's absolutely the kind of dungeon where a decently geared tank and healer make a significant difference. I'd also recommend having mana potions, they can um, help 
quite a bit here. But overall, it's not really a hard dungeon. It's also not the typical dungeon, as you don't really have normal trash outside of the panthers, spiders, and crocolisks that are littered around the area, which you can actually farm for quite a bit of gold from the silks, from the spiders in particular, for mages and protection paladins, highly indicated if it if you can actually pull large groups of them, independent, of course, on the prices on those uh, those items. In terms of the real trash, you have the portals, their guardians, and the constant stream of mobs that are going to seek to kill Medivh. These are rather easy to deal with, while the portal guardians may be a bit more challenging, but certainly nowhere near as hard as certain mobs in other dungeons can be. Just be aware that there is a certain amount of AV damage, there can be high tank damage to deal with, so something to be prepared for. While dealing with the constant waves of trash may be something of a challenge, since you don't have any real breaks that you can take to recover, and if you wipe is penalizing, if you wipe completely, if Mediv dies, you have to start over. This is, however, made easier by the fact you can summon the bronze dragonflight to help you with the consumables, and thus trivialize certain waves. The only actual challenge, as I see it, in the entire da uh, dungeon will actually come from the bosses, because the you can't use the bronze dragonflight if you're in a bad situation with them, so you have to deal with them on your own. But even they aren't anything special outside of the potentially high damage they can do on your tanks, and this of course depends on the tuning. Arguably the greatest difficulty I personally see in this particular dungeon might come from the fact uh, that many people just don't care about it, and might be quite difficult to actually find a suitable uh, and decent group to clear it with as the design of the dungeon itself doesn't lend itself to having a great experience, and many people tend to avoid it because of that and because of the lack of gear. I mean, the people who need the gear are probably physical DPSers if they care about the belt, maybe some people who want the sword, as it's one of the few swords you have access to that's actually any... Uh, has decent stats on it, pre-raid, maybe, I don't know, protection paladins. But it's a big maybe, and most people, even people that might benefit from the gear, won't really care too much about it. Normal? Sure, absolutely. But everyone has to do it on normal in order to get the tune to Karazhan. On heroic, different discussion. At number three, we have the Slave Pen's Heroic, and in a practical sense, this might actually be number one, as you're more likely to see good groups for this particular dungeon, more so than any other in the game, partly due to the speed, how easy it is, and also because of the good loot that people want, in particular the Caster Trinket that will be farmed from pretty much the beginning till the end of the Burning Crusade. With a few exceptions, the trash isn't anything special. There are some high damage crabs, but the majority of it doesn't do too much damage or have too many annoying abilities, making for a fairly smooth experience. Add to that the fact that you can skip quite a reasonable amount of it, and it can be a rather quick and painless experience to get through this particular dungeon. It may, of course, fall apart very quickly here, as people can and do, in my experience, fail the skips, sometimes in fairly spectacular fashion. But even so, it isn't a hard dungeon, and even if you do waste time because people ninja pulled some trash bag that they shouldn't have, you can recover pretty quickly enough from that. Boss-wise, the first one is pretty much a joke. A Draenei Shaman whose abilities and damage are quite lacking, while the second and third boss may do some high damage, but they also aren't too dangerous. Overall, Slave Pens is a fairly popular and easy dungeon to do that, as I've stated, casters will want to do from the beginning till the end because of the trinket that drops that they will want. Many of them will want mages, warlocks, and particular will desire that particular trinket. And many other people will use this particular dungeon to farm their badges of justice. And number two, we have Steam Vaults, heroic, for honestly much the same reasons as Slave Pens, though there isn't as good loot here as there is in Slave Pens, so this one is slightly less popular, but there is a reason why all of the Cenarian Expedition, why all the Coil Fang dungeons are on this list. They just really aren't that hard dungeons, and you can do them fairly quickly. Underbog can be annoying, but honestly, like, even so, it's not too hard. And Steam Vaults is probably one of the fastest. Yes, there are two annoying mobs to Underbog Giants that you have to deal with as you enter the instance, but outside of that, the trash here is not that plentiful, you can skip a good amount of it, and uh, they also don't do high damage or have annoying abilities. Some exceptions do exist, but you can skip most, if not all, of those uh, 
uh, those trash packs that might actually cause you uh, issues. I'm talking here specifically about the elementals. So here you do have uh, ability to skip for a lot of the trash. You don't have very difficult trash, nor do you have a lot of it, to be honest. I, f I think like when it comes to trash, it's only really the final boss that has a reasonable, a fair amount of it. And even then the packs aren't uh, too, difficult, uh, too difficult to deal with. Boss wise, uh, speaking about the bosses, it's only really the second boss that stands out. And only because he summons a horde of gob gnomes, really go goblins, gnomes, whatever, um, that you have to deal with in order to kill him. And you will want to have some AoE. Having a warlock, having two warlocks can help you here, especially on the first boss, as you can banish the adds there and helps you out with AoE on the second boss. But for the most part, pretty much a face roll dungeon and casters will want it, play people will want it. It's an easy place to farm badges of justice. It's an easy place to get exalted scenario and expedition. There's some reasonable items. I mean, sure, there's nothing specific from Heroic that people care about, but it's so easy that people will not even do normal. They will just do Heroic because the thinking is, well, why bother doing normal when I can do Heroic, get the same loot, get badges, get some extra loot, get gems, right? That's the thinking for a lot of people and certainly a dungeon that allows that to happen. And at number one, we have Akanai Crypts Heroic. A bit of a special dungeon that pretty much breaks the rules of how you approach dungeons in the Burning Crusade. See, for the most part, when it comes to dungeons in the Burning Crusade, for all of them pretty much except this one, you want to go in there with some measure of CC if you're badly geared, right? Black Morass, I guess, is another exception as well here to this rule just because of the way it's designed. But the way it works in most dungeons is you bring a mage, you bring a warlock potentially, you CC mobs, uh, and you take them one at a time. Once you get a certain amount of uh, raiding gear, how much dependent on the tuning that there will be in these dungeons. But once you have a certain amount of raiding gear, you can uh, just go in there, especially a protection paladin, and AOE everything down. That's certainly possible for pretty much every heroic in the Burn Crusade, with the exception of Akunai Crypt's heroic. That really won't work as well in this dungeon as it would for many other dungeons. Certainly you can do it, but it's not really designed from that perspective. See, the way this dungeon works, and the reason it's number one is because of the mobs, the trash that it has. The trash has annoying abilities, absolutely. They summon a lot of ads. One of those ads, one of those types of ads can mind control uh, a person in your party and you have to do a lot of damage to them in order to break it. So that can be frustrating to deal with, certainly. But here's the thing, the mobs have fuck all HP and fuck all armor. So they are very, very easy to kill for physical DPSers, which goes contrary to how you'd approach the vast majority of heroics. I mean, certainly physical DPSers, hunters in particular, are the highest DPSers in the entire game. But for the majority of dungeon content, it's mages, it's warlocks, really, that dominate even elemental shamans just because of their AoE ability. Here, you don't want to AoE as much as you want to kill these mobs very, very quickly. So having a hunter, having a, a fury warrior, having an enhancement shaman early on with, uh, with crap gear, these guys can erase the mobs in this particular dungeon and make it for a very easy uh, and smooth experience. So you don't want to go and pull everything and AoE it down. You want to take it one mob at a time or small packs at a time, but you can kill them very quickly. And it's so fast that you can genuinely do this dungeon in 15 minutes with crap gear if you have the right setup. So an enhancement machine and a fury warrior, a hunter, that's probably the ideal group setup. There are some AoE packs in the very last room of the dungeon, but compared to everything else, they are pretty much a joke. The uh, abilities are annoying. The mobs do reasonably high damage, but you can kill them so quickly that it doesn't really matter, honestly, when it comes to it. Boss-wise, yeah, they do reasonably high damage, and you will need to race against clocks at speak before your tanks die, before your healer run runs out of mana, or you get too many stacks on the first boss and the healer can't heal the tank anymore. So that's certainly a race against time. That can be frustrating to deal with. But when it comes to the vast majority of the dungeon and the things that you're dealing with here, it is pretty much a joke. And it's one of the very few examples where you have a dungeon that plays out very similarly to how, I guess, raids work in vanilla. Like right now in vanilla and classic, the way we approach raiding is we stack as many physical DPSers, as many warriors in particular as we can in order to destroy everything in our pack 
path very, very quickly because we just have, as warriors, we just have that very high single target damage, especially with raid buffs. It's a similar attitude that you have with Akanai Crypt's Heroic, and certainly you can do it to some extent in other dungeons, but it's nowhere near as successful as it is in this place. And for that reason, coupled with the fact that the bosses, yeah, they can be annoying, but not too much of a challenge either. Now, all of this may be surprising for certain people that dealt with all of this on retail. Certainly it was for me dealing with this dungeon on private servers versus the experience I remember having on retail. But, you know, a decade changes things, right? The way people play the game, the way they approach things, the DPS they do, the healing they do, the way we gear ourselves up. I mean, I think that's one of the things that people ignore when it comes to difficulty. And it's like, oh, classic is very easy compared to how I remember retail. Yeah, but we the very badly on retail, we had horrible specs, we didn't have enchants, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And same really with Burning Crusade early on. We did figure it out. Burning Crusade forced us to figure it out. Like it forced us to theory craft, it forced us to go with min-max rate setups and all that because it was certainly one of the hardest expansions in the history of World of Warcraft. And for a good reason, it has their reputation. But with that kind of knowledge, right, if applying knowledge from a decade later certainly makes uh, this dungeon in particular trivial in comparison to what we were dealing with on retail. Questine here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. If you do enjoy my content, please do consider supporting me via PayPal, Patreon, or for YouTube channel membership. God bless and stay tuned for more.